Here it is, man, the archetypal cottage in the country. Peace and quiet, communing with nature, eating yoghurt straight from the cow. Well, I hope there's a chemist shop around here. I badly need some conditioner. I feel like, ooh, where's all gummage or something? Is it just me? Is there a bit too much green everywhere? Everything's green. It's relentless. I guess God just ran out of ideas. Hey, hey, have you seen those really weird things out the back? They're called cows, Peggy. Well, you know them. You know, you're very weird, Sally. Very weird. Stop, Stop it! Stop all this bickering. If we all wanted some peace and quiet, why did we all come along together? So that we could grow to hate each other in a different environment, yes. It's not spooky. It looks a bit spooky to me. All cottages are spooky. Look, there's a row mong there from someone hanging themselves and twitching in agony like a sick puppet on a washing line. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, no, high noon. Yeah, I was going to say that. I bagsy first choice of rooms. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, because no, that's really childish, isn't it? Bagsy in rooms. It's a sign of immaturity. People, I'm all right. No! Really, get that thing off my Where's the telly? There's no telly, man. No telly? What are we going to do with no telly? Haven't you ever heard of conversation, Shadow? Oh, you mean talk to each other? What about? You're right. You're right. Conversation just reinforces feelings of emptiness and loneliness. <laughs> Still, never mind, eh? What do you mean, there isn't a phone? How the hell is Martin going to phone me? I thought you said he was a weasley fat git with a beard and that you never wanted to see him again. You wanted yeah, to kill him. Yeah, that was yesterday. Today I want to have his babies all right. Right. I'm going hunting. What do you fancy? Duck, swan, badger, deer, or something furry that lives underground. Come on, wood show in half an hour. I'll come with you, man. Okay, man, take that. You, you realise if you kill defenceless animals, their spirit comes back and haunts you in another life. They won't be defenceless. We'll give them a choice of weapons. It'll be a fair fight. Let's go to work. Get me a kosher badger. I don't think I'm up to stabbing a wild animal with a kitchen knife, man. OK, well, um, I'll chase them out the undergrowth. You run them over with the car. Nice one. OK. G'day, my name's Charlene and I'm from New Zealand. I'm Gus and I'm from Australia. Yep. That's a proper country. Oh, shut up, Gus. Shut up. We like it here in England. We work in the bars. Um, sounds a bit crook, but it's pretty educational. Yeah, yeah, you get to learn a lot about... Uh, glasses? Yeah, glasses. Like, to get lipstick off a glass, you gob into a hanky and scrape it round. Yeah, but you've got to be careful, right, not to get snot on the rim, because oh, the customers get a bit fussy. Bastards, yeah. But it's not all work. We get to travel around a lot. Yeah, we don't care where we go as long as there's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> right. We went to Glastonbury down there in uh, Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was no. great. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. We walked in the beer tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there were loads of those hippies around, you know. Yeah, no, it was brilliant. There were some fantastic, oh, fantastic bands on there. Fantastic bands. We saw around. You bands. didn't see. We saw... What did we see? Well, we didn't see any of them. Really. No, we didn't see anything, actually. We were too pissed. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but we like it here in England. Yeah, no, we really like it. I mean, you may be a bunch of colonialist bastards, but you're really polite. Yeah, like in Australia, they just chuck up in your face. But here in England, right? Yeah, they're like, warn you. I like so you can close your eyes and your mouth or duck. There's nothing worse than chewing on someone else's pee. Oh, sh oh shit, man. What's the matter, Shah? Oh, no, I've just kicked my pants. I what? thought I'd farted, but I haven't. I drank too much last night. I've lost control of my bells. Unreal. No, real, man. Uh, uh, at least I'll stop the pums from pinching me ass. I'm going to go in. Shah? Yeah. It's all right, Shah. I got you covered, mate. Yeah, it's all right, mate. Oh, my God, Charlie. What were you eating yesterday? Right, right, a wombat? Tell me about that, um... What, that pr prat? That he? prat. What was he? He was a prat. He was some sort of actor. He was oh, an actor. yeah, yeah. They're making this film, right, about surfing in Britain, right, about the surf scene. That's right. Uh, and and <laughs> they come down here, you know, some adventure crap, That's romantic right. crap, some, some romantic story or something. Story, yeah. Anyway, they, they come down here, it's like this coach full of twats, right, coming to do a sort of, a, some sort of research And there's this yeah. total prat who's some actor Burke. Yeah, and he, we had to give him, like, a crash course in surfing, so he, it looked as if he knew what he was doing. Yeah, we right. get him on the beach, we get him on the board, on the sand, throw him out to stand up. That's, and he says, oh, is it that easy? <laughs> <laughs> Prat didn't realise he had to go in the sea. What a prat. It, we took, it was a rough day. Yeah, rough yeah, day. yeah, yeah. How he goes, How he looking goes. for all the world like a prat. Like a prat. And we took, we've sent him out on this really crap board as well. It's like really rubbishy board, but no, there was no ankle strap or there was yeah. no rope. Because he'd rubbed us up the wrong way. Really. Yeah, of course, off he comes. He falls yeah. into the, you know, he couldn't swim. Yeah. Could he? Board heads <laughs> off in the opposite direction. That's right, he goes off with the other. He's sinking and stuff. I wouldn't have gone out. I wouldn't have gone out. They certainly had to get the Coast Guard out. Yeah, they had helicopters. Helicopters. They never found it. And I said to 
this film lot, I said you should call your film The Ultimate Wipeout. That's right, but they hadn't been filming that day. That was the thing, they hadn't come out to do any filming at all. No! So they that would have been a great been shot with him great. going down the third time. Yeah, splashing about like yeah. a... like a Anyway. Like a prat. Yeah. Always not lost, always was it? Always not lost. Because no them way. film company birds, eh, know a few tricks them or two. Birds, yeah. Tricks, eh? Don't they, mainly, eh? Mainly disappearing. Disappearing trick, innit? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so. Still, surf, surf off. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that just because I'm a doctor, just because I have five science A-levels, that means I'm not arty. Well, I'd like to challenge your preconceptions with this. It's the first three lines of The Divine Comedy by Dante. Nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita mi ritrovai per una selva oscura ove la diritta via era smarita. Thanks very much. I'd um, have a different costume, though. Hello. I'm doing a survey. Could I ask you some questions to find out what sort of person you are? Yes. Super great. Now, which brand of coffee? Look out! He's got a gun! So that's B. You're very gullible. Hello. Hi. Um, I need... Hello! Hello. Uh, I need some flowers for somebody who's... Flowers? Who told you about flowers? What? Who told you to come here? Don't answer that! Flowers? No problem. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. Um, I'll just have... Um... Put that away! Not... For God's sake! That's fine. 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 OK. <laughs> oh, have you got any, um... What? Oh. What? Oh. Oh, what's the word? Oh, have you got any, um... Oh, fertiliser. Oh, I see, fertiliser. Get up! Who told you about the fertiliser? Who told you? Nobody told me. I just happened to be passing by. Oh, God! <laughs> She's just passing by. <laughs> I just happened to be passing by. <laughs> Bye, then. Bye. But what about the fertiliser? I don't know! <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. And now, get out. I mean, goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. Doodle bit. Um, uh... Have you got any seeds? Seeds? <gasps> hi, hello, hi, super great, it's me again, hi. Can I just ask you how you'll be voting in the next election? Actually, sod it, um, to be honest, the real reason I stopped you is because I've seen you around and <laughs> I think I'm falling in love with you. you Tasty little morsel, you scrumptious little fool. I think you're very pretty, Ooh. and I quite like to also. So that's C. You're extremely gullible. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Open up! Look, he's not here! Don't oh. give me that, Cindy! You better approach it, me! Got him, Sarge. Come on, Berkeley. Took your time about it. Yeah, you're it now. I'll turn to hide. All right, 100, is it? You know the rules, Berkeley. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten, hundred. Come in, where do you know? Charles, my dear foppish fella, I have not seen you in the country for some weeks. Pray tell what employment you are in these days. I appear to not have any employment, sir, for as with all these damnable merchant ivory films, I seem to exist with no visible means of support. I have a private income. From where, sir? I don't know, sir. It's private. But they have provided you with a charming wife, sir. Indeed they have, for Letitia is as pretty as a picture. Yes, sir, but not just any picture. Oh, no, sir. Oh, no, sir. Clarify your meaning, sir, for fear I might take offence and call your cad and challenge you to a duel at dawn to be fought naked on a carpet of frosty leaves. So, my dear Letitia, how are you and your husband Charles faring? Uh, he eats, he sleeps, he breathes, he breaks wind. 
And there is very little else to recommend him. Your wife is as pretty as a picture of a pretty woman painted by a great artist, a Rubens or a Guga, but not a Picasso, sir. For she certainly does not have two eyes on the same side of her head, sir. Thank God she does not, for it would be hard to look at her if that were the case. And she, in turn, would find it most difficult to wear spectacles. Oh, dear Letitia, perhaps we may have the good fortune to see Hamish, the gardener, today. Oh, I do hope so, for he may be working without his shirt. Oh, wondrous bliss and joy to witness that event. Do you have sex with her? Indeed I do not, Rupert, for sex to Letitia is much like the unicorn. She has heard about it, but is not convinced of its existence and will not come with me into the woods to catch a glimpse of its magic horn. <sighs> and then he, he spoke words. He spoke words. Yes. What words, dear Catherine? He said, hello, love. Love? He said, love. Yes. And then he said, when the fishing season starts, I'll be after casting my rod in your pond, you shiny muffin, you. Oh, what poetry, Catherine, what silky phrases, but what can he mean? I don't know, but I shall make sure my pond is free of weeds and willies by the spring. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we should have that uh, duel anyway, so what say you? Only on condition that I may keep my hat on, sir, for I feel naked without it. Although I shall, of course, be naked with it. Very well, sir, but no pants. The pants will be discarded, sir, I assure you. Otherwise, you will deny yourself the sensation of chilly flesh against twigs and bracken. My lawn or yours? Hi, hello, it's me again. <laughs> Super. Finally, just one Sorry, last question. No way, not no, again. Please, not... please, I just want to ask you about... <laughs> Look out, there's a man in white fronts with a knife! Oh, man in white fronts with a knife. <laughs> great, so that's A. You're not quite as gullible as we thought. Super great. I spy with my little eye something... Field. You, yes, how'd you get that? It's just far too easy, Katie. Yeah, well, I mean, that's basically all there is. Field, sky, grass, trees, cows, that's, I mean, that's all there is. Right, I spy my little eye, something beginning with M. Martin, for going out with someone else because I haven't phoned him for 24 hours. Mouse. No. Moose. Oh. Moose. What? Mud. Men. Murder. <laughs> the men have returned. We bring meat and beasts of the field. <laughs> Thank God for that. I'm starving. Yeah. Yeah. They put up a bit of a struggle, but we got them in the end. Nice one. Sometimes I think that the aliens have landed and are living amongst us disguised as boys. Maybe if we ignore them, they'll go back to the mothership. Mothership? No. Mouth. Um, it had a sort of a fin, a fin on the middle, not where you'd expect a fin to ordinarily be. It was sort of a bigger than... More of a, uh, well, you know... Oh, not like a wing. Wing. Well, no, not a, no, not a wing. Well, like a wing, so oh, wing-esque, wing-based, wing sure. But, but bigger than a wing or a fin, it was a wing-bing fin thing. Bigger than that, you know, but not as long as a wing. Oh. And longer. Well, it was made of something. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Kind of a... Bone? No, now, you see, that wasn't... You'd expect it to be bone, wouldn't you? You'd expect it to be bone. Wood? But it wasn't bone, it was wood. A well, wood-based bone plastic. Paper? That kind of... Paper might be paper. You know, one of the most difficult concepts to explain to a non-Christian is the idea that a person can die and then rise from the dead some time later. As a long-term fan of The Doors, and particularly that excellent album Strange Days, I was delighted to bump into Jim Morrison the other day at my local HMV megastore. Unlike our Lord's couple of days in the land of the non-living, it had taken the Lizard King, as he is known, some 25 years to return to us. I asked him why it had taken such a long time for him to regain his seat at the back of the blue bus. He explained that he'd been so bombed out of his gourd at the time of his passing that it, it had been a really heavy trip for him to get his shit together. Well, before we parted company, he put his arm drunkenly around my shoulder and advised me to break on through to the other side. I took his advice. I put L.A. woman on the turntable, I drank seven bottles of bourbon, I uh, smoked ten or eleven enormous spliffs, took a fistful of downers and rounded off the evening that way. Well, I didn't break on through to the other side, but I did have a damn jolly bloody good time. And at the end of the day, that's what counts, isn't it? See you Sunday. It moved in a very strange, peculiar way. It, was a, oh, oh, it wasn't a conventional way. movement. I don't know. I, um, it was sort of a lopsided walk. You know, did it walk? Did it run? Did you know, it hobble? Did it nobble? Did kind it kind of hobble? Did it wiggle? I'll tell you what it did. I'll tell you what it did. I'll tell you what it did. It did this. 
Well, I've never seen anything in my life that's gone. Do, 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 do. Everyone on earth eats so I wear skirts because I feel really free and comfortable in them. I think it's stupid that other men feel they can't wear skirts because of societal pressure. I mean, what's wrong with wearing a skirt, for God's sake? A kilt's a skirt, isn't it? You wouldn't catch people taking the mickey out of Big Ross McRoss with his cable for wearing a skirt, I don't know. It's just because I'm small, people think they can bully me. They should pick on someone their own size, cowards, in their trousers. <laughs> Films. We've all seen them, all big and full of light and that. But where do they come from? One theory is that they come from Hull. Another, that they are raised on special farms by ancient women. But by far the most popular theory is that they come from people's heads in the form of ideas, which are then converted into special paper through which light can be shined. Recently, however, it has emerged that the heads of some filmmakers are empty and completely full of nothing. As a result, these filmmakers have turned to piracy, plundering the lives of innocent people as a mongoose might plunder eggs from the lair of a cobra. I have one such innocent in the studio tonight. Dave Pringle, welcome. Hello, darling. Tell us about everything. Well, um, I believe that the films Close Encounters of the Third Kind and Robocop both borrow heavily from my own life experiences. Right. Right. How would that be exactly? Well, for instance, Robocop happened mm. to me when I was about 18. Uh -huh. um, I joined the police force in 1986 as a favour to my uh, grandfather, Erhi, who tended the goats on a distant mount, together with Peter, his mischievous prodigy. And um, he'd always been a big fan of the Sweeney. It was his <laughs> favourite show, you know, he watched it all the time. Yeah. And um, he'd often make me dress up in a sort of tight-fitting black polo neck sweater mm -hmm. and chase him round the house, <laughs> shouting, I'm going to bloody have you, you slag! <laughs> <laughs> you know. And um, ironically enough, when I became a policeman, my grandfather was the first person that I arrested and murdered. Oh, dear. And um, one day, I was called out on a B17-6. Oh, goodness me, I'm fascinated. What's that? I don't know. Right. Okay. Um, Carry on. Anyway, I was uh, suddenly shot to bits by an evil sniper and had to go to hospital have my whole body replaced by the gift of robotic surgery. And, uh, but in the end, I found that I couldn't wear the titanium body armour. Why was that? Because it, it gave me a bit of jogger's nipple. Dear, ow. Ow, yeah, <laughs> sore, I can tell you. And what about the second film, David, um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind? That's a, a very different film. How yeah. does it resemble your own life? Go and see it, go to the pictures, right. you know, nestle down, bag of popcorn, watch the movie. Right, with a friend. With a friend, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, the only difference I can see is that I, did, I obviously didn't fly away in the spaceship Alan Richard Dreyfus, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Right, well, I would have been tempted. Why <laughs> was that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, my dog and then bridge partner, Alan, yes. um, was up on a very serious sheep worrying charge at the time. He had allegedly been spotted hanging right. around a number of local farms, spreading a rumour that uh, wool was passé. Um, a lot of sheep got worried. <laughs> Do you know something, David? What? I've never hated anyone the way I hate you. Sorry? Where's the bloody producer? I wanted to be a lollipop man, but they wouldn't give me a lollipop man. You know, it's dangerous standing in the middle of the street with traffic and stuff without a lollipop. I'm here, babe. Don't worry. Buckinghamshire Jones? That's me. But how did you escape from the Combine Harvester, Jones? I stepped to the left. Oh, God. Come any closer until the girl gets it. Oh, Bucky, he's serious. The tractor's full of manure. She's right, you know. There's 40 heads burst up there, fresh from Johnson's farm. You're a sick man, you know. I know. But the doctors refuse to help me. Now, come closer. Nice and slow. You'll regret this. Regrets? <laughs> I've had a few. Now kneel down in the shop. Oh, please! Please be merciful, Baron Winkhausen! No way, baby. Oh. He has oh. taken half a dozen eggs from my farm. Now he must pay. That will be one pound fourpence, please, Mr. Jones. Right. There you go, Jack. Thanks very much. See you next Tuesday. All right, yeah. see you then. Come on, Barbara, let's be off home. Oh, why do we have to go through this bloody rigmarole every time we want to buy produce off him? You know, it's just his little way. Oh, we forgot the butter. Did you say butter? Oh, forget it. We'll go to the supermarket. Yeah, come on. 
Mel Gibson wore a skirt in Brave Fire. Everybody knows he's cool and hard. It just means I'm not afraid of expressing myself. Not afraid to be in touch with my feminine side, my skirt side. The side of me that likes women and, and, and likes some of the skirts they wear. Not bras and pants or anything. I, I'm, not, I'm not transvestite. I'm not into makeup and stuff. I'm not weird or anything. Welcome to the future. My name's Mallet. Jim Mallet. DSS. Fraud Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Mother. Psst. Wake up. Who are you? My name's Mallet. Jim Mallet. DSS. Fraud Squad. Mmm. You're cute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, my little chick, chick, chicklets. I see you're getting acquainted. Two pawns in the most devilishly ingenious capers that the world has ever known. <laughs> <laughs> you're mad. Absolutely mad. Correct! <laughs> That's what they've all said. But I, the great Dr. Olaf Peterson, will be laughing on the other side of my face when my master plan is unleashed on the whole world! <laughs> then we'll see who's mad when they're holding out the pathetic little pederast hands for the ink of the pot. Did somebody say benefit fraud? So fast. What's that? This. That. This. <laughs> ah! Just a two mile drop to death. <laughs> Who can save the world now that our hero is dead? Watch next week's even cheaper episode of Mallet The Day the Gyro Stopped. Pamela Anderson, my God, look at those boobs. That's a joke. You're still looking at them, though, aren't you? What? You say her boobs are a joke, but you're still looking at them. Yeah, but only like I'd look at the, the pyramids or something. The pyramids? Well, yeah, they're a phenomenon. They're unreal. I'm sorry, Gordon, but the pyramids are one of the greatest works of art of any civilization. Pamela Anderson's tits are two plastic bags filled with silicon. I really don't see the comparison. Apart from they neither of them move. Don't get huffy. Look, I'm not getting huffy. I'm just saying that you're a bloke and blokes like looking at tits. Just admit it. OK, OK, so it's not an unpleasant sight. It's not as bad as looking at a bottle bank. Is that what you want to hear? That's fine. Good. It's sad, but it's fine. What's that supposed to mean? It's sad that somebody of your intelligence should get off on looking at some blonde bint with freaky tits. I'm not getting oh, you off. Oh, look at you, getting off. Why are you so threatened by her? I'm threatened her? That's not a her, that's an it. That's a Legoland woman. If that's what you want, then just go ahead. That's not Nick, what I want. Have your plastic kids and live in your bouncy castle with your plastic Pamela Anderson and, you know, don't come crawling and snivelling to me when you lose your sad, I sad soul. I want you, Carol. What did you say? I said I don't want her, I want you. Really? Yes. It's only because you can't have her. Yeah, I know. I'm joking, I'm joking. I don't care what people say. I like being different. I'm not afraid to wear a skirt. It's not like I wear one all the time or anything. This is the first time, actually. But I'm not going to stop. Why should I? I think I look nice in this skirt. I've got the legs for it. I just might not wear it for the pub quiz. I will wear it, though. At home. Abroad. <laughs>